stop here, and, but I, I, I made, the problem is, is I, it, it's a little bit more than an, I think an hour to try to get through Rickettsia. Right, let me just go through the introduction. Right? We won't go into any, any diseases. I just let me get through some of the introductory part. And okay. All right. We're going to talk a whole, about a whole group of organisms here, the Rickettsia, Aurantia, Ehrlichia, Anaplasma, Coxiella, and the Bartonella. This is, these are all different species. And, and, and the, the, the reason, or these are actually the, the different genera, um, the reason that these are handled as a group, it, it's basically for historical, for historical reasons and also because of some of the diseases that they cause are, are pretty similar. But historically, these actually, with the exception of the Bartonella, all the rest of these were all, at one time, considered one group of organisms, all uh, rickettsia. And so these were called the rickettsial diseases. We know now that, in fact, these are completely different genera, and, uh, and some of them are related, but even some of these are even are not related. But they were considered all this one genera because basically the, disease they, the diseases that they caused were pretty similar. Uh, the reason Bartonella is thrown in this group is also because a, the, one of the diseases that this organism caused is very similar to the disease caused by one of the, the rickettsia. So uh, historically, these were all at one time either considered to be the same species or at least they, they cause similar type diseases. In addition, all of these diseases, with one exception, are, are transmitted by arthropod vectors. And so they were always considered to be related and similar. So that's why we treat them together, basically. And let me just give you a, a, just a brief history of, of some of these diseases. These diseases, the rickettsial diseases, uh, were in fact has been known, have been documented at least since the 16th century. Obviously, they, they existed prior to that, but the, the first earliest documentation of this as a unique disease it goes back to the 16th century. Uh, and, and the disease was called epidemic typhus. And, and this disease typhus is actually associated with, with conditions of war and, and, and famine. That's typically when you see the disease, um, when there's famine and war. And although we've known, and this just gives you some statistics, in World War I and II, over 100,000 people were affected in, in those periods of the war with this epidemic typhus. Now, although we've known about this disease for, what, 500 years now, um, it's only actually in the 20th century that the, we began to realize or what caused this disease and identify an organism that caused the disease. And in fact, the first organism, the first rickettsia that was, was clearly identified as a, as a unique organism was the causative agent of Rocky Mountain spotted fever, not the causative agent of, of typhus, but in a different disease, a Rocky Mountain spotted fever. And Ricketts is the guy that discovered this. this and, and obviously that's why it's called the Ricketsial diseases, named after him. And shortly after he identified the causative agent of that disease as being a unique organism, it was shown that, in fact, arthropods were the vectors for this disease. And then arthropod control measures were instituted. And once we started con uh, controlling the, the transmission of this disease by the arthropods, these diseases started dropping down in, in, in occurrence, OK? So we instituted these measures, and these diseases disappeared. Or not disappeared, but the, the number of these diseases at least dropped precipitously. But they're not gone. Th this is a quote by this guy, Hans Zinser. Hans Zinser uh, made his career studying the causative agent of that epidemic typhus. And he, he points out that even though it's gone now, for all practical purposes, if we get into a situation with war and famine, these are likely to come back. And there are certainly are areas in the world where, these, where this disease still does occur. So it, it's controlled, but it's not gone. Okay. All right, a little bit about the biology of these organisms. And we'll, we'll consider these as a group because the biology of these organisms is, is pretty similar. All right. So will the Rickettsia, the Aurentia, Ehrlichia, Anaplasma, and Coxiella. These are all also obligate intracellular parasites. 
Okay? And again, just like the chlamydia, the, originally these things were thought to be viruses, um, but they're not. They're, they're true bacteria. They contain DNA, RNA, ribosomes. They're, they're bona fide bacterias, bacteria. And we know now that all of these are completely unrelated g g genera, although their biology is similar and the diseases they cause are, are similar. They're really completely unrelated genera. They're gram-negative bacteria, but they don't stain particularly well with the gram stain. There's another stain, and you don't have to remember what the name of that stain, stain is. It's called Gimza. But uh, the gram stain doesn't work very well with these organisms, but they are gram-negative organisms. These are also energy parasites. But you notice I put energy parasites here in, in quotes because these are not strict or obligate energy parasites. If they have to, they can make their own ATP. But they do, in fact, when they infect their cells, parasitize the ATP. They may as well use the host ATP. But in the absence of host ATP, these organisms could make their own ATP, unlike the chlamydia, which can't. The chlamydia are obligate parasites. These are energy parasites, but they're not obligate energy parasites. They have a very effective transport system that they, they transport ATP into the cell. And <coughs> There are reservoirs for all of these things, and, and we're, so we're going to talk a lot about what the reservoirs are. We're going to talk a lot about what the vectors are for each of these diseases. And the reservoirs can be animals, insects, and for one of the diseases, we're actually the reservoir for the disease. And again, all of these have arthropod vectors with the exception of the coxiella. There's, there's no vector for coxiella. All right, so here's a list of the diseases that the, these, these cause and, and the, the agents. The disease Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is called, caused by Rickettsia rickettsii. There's a tick vector involved in this, and the reservoir is actually the tick itself as well as rodents. So the, the, uh, the tick in, in itself, and we'll talk about this, actually can act as the reservoir for the infection as well. Ehrlichiosis, there's three species that cause this, Ehrlichia chaffiensis, Erguini, and Anaplasma phagocytophilium. Again, all of them have tick vectors, and the reservoirs are in either mammals, small mammals, or in the deers. In these, these differ sometimes in their, just their geographic location, where you find these. The disease Rickettsial pox, and Jack, when you're, we're finished, this thing, I think, needs to be replaced. The battery's going on this thing. Uh, rickettsia pox is caused by rickettsia acari. The vector is a mite. In the reservoir are the mite and the rodents. Scrub typhus, we'll talk about. This is, this is caused by Ariensia tsutsugumushi. Okay? Uh, again, vectors and, and, road, and reservoirs. This is, the, this is the most serious of the diseases, although it is not common because, it, because of, we're controlling this. This is the epidemic typhus caused by uh, uh, Rickettsia proezeki. Now, in the epidemic form of this disease, when it does occur in, in times of war and famine, the vector is the louse, and we're the actual reservoir for this disease. But there is also a sporadic form of this disease, and there's actually the sporadic form of this disease is located in this part of the United States, in the southeastern part of the United States. But it's, it's pretty rare, it's not, it's not very common. And in that case, the vector is the flea, and the, and the reservoir is the flea or flying squirrels are acting as the reservoir for these diseases. There's another disease called murine typhus, and, and it's, it's really a bad name. There, it's sometimes also called as endemic typhus. It's not an infection of, of mice. Uh, this is just called en murine typhus or endemic typhus, caused by rickettsia typhi. Flea is the vector, rodent is the thing. And in the, in the last disease is Q fever, caused by Coxiella brunetti. This is the one that doesn't have a vector. But the reservoirs are sheep and cattle and, and goats and things like that. Okay, um, let's let's stop here and we'll pick up at this point tomorrow. We'll start with the rickettsia. <laughs>